in Cambridge. I am extremely happy to see you all tonight. It's shining like a diamond, like a diamond. <laughs> Why? I stop it. Sorry about that. Um, well, it's Thursday, day 30, channel 9, CCTV, and I'm here, and we are watching Good Evening Cambridge. I'm extremely happy to see you all again. Um, tonight, I would like to um, dedicate this episode to one person who is in my heart, and um, I will be talking about Thanksgiving today, and the history about the uh, holiday, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. First of all, I would like to tell you about some events, which one will go in on on Thursday on, um, in Cambridge, because the CCTV station will be closed, everybody will be at home uh, making dinner. So if you don't have to make a dinner, you probably have to go somewhere and do something, so I have a couple ideas for you. And the um, CCTV will be closed next week, so you know. So we're clear, okay? Um, alrighty, so I had a little trouble with uh, Facebook today. I don't know why. But um, it doesn't really work that well, so I couldn't upload the uh, links I wanted to show you today. I have only one saved there, so let's take a look on our Facebook my Facebook page right there over there here you go it's working you see okay all right so this is pretty interesting exhibition and I think um, I think you would like that because uh, the, um, the admission there is free so you can enjoy it Alrighty, let's take a look here. So it will uh, be at Leslie University London Art Center. The address there is 1801 Massachusetts Avenue, Cambridge. It's in uh, at Porter Square. The exhibition called North American Print Biennial, an Archer Students Print Show. So this is one of the oldest and most prestigious print exhibitions in the United States. The 2015 North American Print Biennial, which runs November 8 to December 12 at Leslie University's Land Lander Arts Center in Cambridge. Organized by the Boston Printmakers, an international fine art print association based in Boston, the 2015 Biennial features a spectrum of exciting prints from the most cutting-edge, technology-driven digital prints to elegant, traditional, precis, uh, precis, pro, <clears throat> excuse me, pros, processes like woodcut, etching, and lithography. The exhibition uh, features free gallery talks, demonstrations, a companion student exhibition, and more. In conjunction with the show, Leslie hosts the ninth. Biennial Art Student Print Exhibition in the uh, Van der Noot Gallery at University Hall. This competitive juried show features students prints from 16 colleges and universities in New England. Once again, it's going to be a f um, free admission, so everybody who would like to attend that, more than welcome. Let me see, is there a phone number we can call in case we have a Questions? No, not really. Alrighty. Alrighty. So, um, there is a website I usually checked to see what's going on in Boston, in Cambridge, like in, uh, in, in Massachusetts in general. Uh, bec uh, I like to go different places. My One of my favorite places to go is Salem. Um, I love Cambridge very much. There's a lot of going on every day, basically, and there is plenty of things going on in Boston, obviously. So let's uh, take a look on this website. It's one of my favorite, as, as, as I told you already. It's called the Boston Calendar. You probably know already, but let's take a look here. Yeah, so I would like to show you this website. 
Um, usually I, uh, I go to different websites and then I post the links on the Facebook page, on the Good Evening Cambridge Facebook page. But not today because it's not working for some reason. So there is a, a few interesting few interesting events you can join. Let's take a look over here what we have already. So obviously all of the restaurants are offering all the restaurants are <clears throat> offering a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and I don't know if it's possible, I mean, if, if I can say that, um, I'm pretty sure if you'll go to Town Stuff and Spirit restaurant in Boston where I work, um, the kitchen there is really good and it's, you'll have a great experience there. So maybe you will let me know if you saw me. Anyway, just step by, join me there. I'll be there next Thursday. That's sadly, but I, I wish... I took a day off in prior, but um, let's go back to the website and I will show you the events, which one I think is interesting and worth of trying. So let's go back to the website and see. Restaurant, 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 restaurant. Give me a second here. Oh, right. I love trivias. So on Thursday at 9.30 p.m. at Boston, the, the, the bar called the Modern Underground. Oh, the bar beneath Modern Pest is right over here. Come Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Come Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. for a chance to win prizes. Well, first of all, uh, trivia will let your mind think a little bit, so I think it's worth of trying. And could be fun. Could be fun. Let's go back to the website and see what else we can do on Thursday next week. Intro to Zen Meditation and Cambridge Zen Center. It's free admission again. Um, it will start at seven o'clock. Cambridge Zen Center, located at nine. I'm sorry, one ninety nine Auburn Street in Cambridge. Let's see what what's here. Free and open to all newcomers. This class offers an orientation. I'm sorry about that. Um, the classes offers an orientation to Zen meditation. Um, myself, I really would like to try a meditation to stop my mind from going crazy every day. Um, but unfortunately, I cannot attempt that one. But I will be keep looking and I will let you know what I, did I found out. Let's go back to the website and see what else there. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm afraid I, I'm, I'm doing it very slowly because I don't want to miss those I picked. Alrighty, I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, so, if you will visit the Boston University Theatre, Huntington Theatre, uh, which I'm located 240, I'm sorry, 264 Huntington Avenue in Boston, um, you can see this uh, play, A Confederacy of Dunes, starring Nick Offerman. Um, I will go to see that play a little bit later on, in two weeks actually. And I think it's interesting and I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And I will let you know how did it go. Alrighty, let's go back to the website. I I, well, I I wasn't thinking to tell you about this one, but... Ooh, 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 here you go, here you go. I think this is a great idea. So, 
uh, it's this event called Trapped in a Room with a Zombie. It's in Somerville, uh, 628 Somerville Avenue, in Somerville, uh, on Friday, excuse me, Anyway, I think it started at 6.30 and ends at 7.30. Let's go to the website. Let's figure that out. Okay, so basically what is it about? Um, you are in a room and you have to create a, um, uh, and you have a like certain situation. Room escape adventures are team building activities that create scenarios where participants must rely on each other. Their ability to communicate and um, their creative genius to escape a room. So, participants get to become part of a plot and a cohesive unit that uh, actively controls the storyline of their session. Gun are the days when we only had the option to just go to a movie and watch the action unfold. When you attempt a room escape for 60 minutes of your life, you will become totally removed from your current world and are focused on nothing but escape. Sounds kind of scary, but I think it's really interesting. You can book a ticket here. Um, I believe they are $28 per piece. And if you have any questions, you can uh, send them uh, an email, boston at roomescapeadventures.com. Alrighty. Um, is there more something else I wanted to tell you? Let me just scroll a little bit. But I don't, yeah. For anybody who like a yoga, I actually wanted to attend this class as well, but um, this yoga, uh, this couple will teach yoga at um, Inuk Block Boston. It's a, it's a, a apartment building and they have a studio, there, I mean a gym there, so you can attempt the class at just $15. And I believe it's a um, couple is yoga as well, so you can take your loved one and go enjoy the yoga. So I think it's a good um, alternative to Thanksgiving. Alrighty, that's it for the events. And um, I would like to switch the screen first of all. Here we go. And now I would like to show you a couple of videos which one I found interesting and cute at the same time. So um, regarding Thanksgiving, because to be honest with you, I do not really know what uh, Thanksgiving is about. I mean, I know what is it about, but um, I don't really know the history, even though I've been told about that. And I am trying to figure out what it's actually for. Um, I know that uh, lifestyle here in the United States is kind of busy and everybody's busy all the time and working and there is a little time when you can spend with somebody you really love, with your friends, with your family. So I think, first of all, this holiday is about gathering together and just enjoy each other and a meal in front of you. And of course, be thankful for all that because some people do not have that. All right, first of all, I would like to show you the video um, about kids history because I think they Kids see the world from the different perspective than uh, adults. So, what the kids thinks about um, the first Thanksgiving. So let's take a look on the video. So here you go. The first Thanksgiving started in England with the pilgrims. The pilgrims was a bunch of people who wear bell buckles on their head. They came to America because they wanted to go to a church. But the kingdom, England, wouldn't let them. We 
We've had it with your religious persecution, King James. What are you going to do about it? We're going to America where we can practice our religion freely. Whatever. They were on a big ship called the Mayflower and went to America. What do you think they did when they were on their boat? Play dominoes or something, or chess. It took the Pilgrims a really long time to get to the to America, but they finally got to America in 1620. How long do you think it took them to cross the ocean? Eight days. Four months. 100 days. But when they got there, they were out of food and it was snowing. Did you bring blankets? No. Me neither. <sighs> we should have had a plan before we came here. I think I have hypothemia. The Native Americans helped the pilgrims get to the cold. Hello, English man. I am Squatto. Perhaps we should strike a treaty between our peoples. Good idea. Here's some, here, this is maize. No, that's corn. They show the pilgrims how to grow crops. How to hunt. <coughs> and how to dance. What else do you think they taught them? Uh, girl stuff, like flowers. How to learn rice by singles. And how to shop, I think. They didn't teach them how to fish. The Billigorns was really happy now that they wasn't dying anymore. They decided to have a big party to thank the Native of the American. They even invited Chief Massasoit, the leader of the tribe. Welcome to our banquet, Chief Massasoit. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, that's what we're calling it. Cool. I bet there'll never be problems between the Englishmen and the Native Americans ever again. They had turkey, fruits and vegetables, deer, and pumpkin pie. You know, they actually didn't have pumpkin pie at the first Thanksgiving. What? The feast was a giant example of our spirit. That's why we still celebrate Thanksgiving. I'm hungry. I think that was really cute. And uh, the next video I would like to show you is myths and uh, truth about the Thanksgiving. Uh, really interesting channel to be honest with you. Uh, subscribe to them and let's take a look what they can offer. In 1620, 102 passengers aboard the Mayflower stepped ashore in the New World. But who were these brave explorers? Let's find out. In the UK, we generally think of Thanksgiving as being an American celebration. But did you know that countries such as Canada and China also celebrate their own versions of Thanksgiving? Also, America actually has us Brits to thank for the original Thanksgiving feast. You're welcome. So, you know the story. A bunch of pilgrims arrived in the New World, stepped ashore via a rock they named Plymouth, made friends with the Native Americans, and celebrated their first successful harvest by feasting on cooked turkey, cranberry sauce, potatoes, and pumpkin pie. And Thus, Thanksgiving was born, right? Well, not quite. The Mayflower. The Mayflower first landed at the tip of Cape Cod in what is now Provincetown, so not a rock in Plymouth then. The famous Plymouth Rock didn't actually get a mention in any of the surviving documents at the time and only first appeared in the town records in 1715, but without any historical association. In 1741, a 94-year-old man named Thomas Fonts claimed the original Mayflower passengers had pointed out the rock to him as their original landing spot. But his memory may have been a little hazy. Can we just take a sec to consider the likelihood of bringing a ship alongside a slippery boulder on a choppy December sea? I am Pilgrim. The Pilgrims weren't actually known as the Pilgrims until a good 200 years later when the orator Daniel Webster referred to the settlers as the Pilgrim Fathers. At the time, they called themselves Saints, aka Separatists from the Church of England, and those members of the party who weren't Saints were known as Strangers. They were also collectively given the charming pet name of Puke Stockings by the crew aboard the Mayflower, owing to their inventive use of filling the latter with the former during their voyage. Charming. 
The Separatists had been living in exile in Holland for about 10 years before setting sail for the New World. They had rejected the Church of England and although still religious, they believed that their congregations should be separated from the English state church, but this had been made illegal. Concerned that they were losing their English cultural identity in the Netherlands, the Separatists left for the New World. Puritans, on the other hand, remained part of the church, wishing only to purify it. Among the passengers aboard the Mayflower were two tailors, a printer, several merchants, a silk worker, a shopkeeper, and a hatter. Yeah, they weren't exactly the best prepared people to tackle a strange and unfamiliar land. Failing to bring a single cow, horse, or even a fishing line, they did, however, have at their disposal a drum, a trumpet, a candle snuffer, sundials, oh, and a complete history of Turkey, which, if you ever get a chance, is a really enjoyable read. A man named William Mullins even packed no fewer than 126 pairs of shoes and 13 pairs of boots. You could say he had some serious soul searching to do. As a result of being so ill-prepared, the settlers began dying off in quick succession, and less than six months after their arrival, only 54 people had managed to survive the harsh winter. What did they look like? When you think of what the original Plymouth Colony settlers would have looked like, you'll probably think long black coats, high white collars, and buckles. Lots of buckles. Boy, did those pilgrims love a buckle. Or did they? Actually, it was the Victorian artists of the 19th century who loved to add buckles to their images of how pilgrims looked, thinking it made them look more vintage. And let's face it, accuracy wasn't exactly their strong suit. Also, the pilgrims' clothes were mostly brown, green, and orange, not the black and white look you might be more familiar with. They did, however, wear the stovepipe hat. Although some might say that the hat wore them. The New World. Arriving in the New World, the pilgrims were eventually greeted by a couple of Native Americans known as Samoset and Tisquantum, but struggling with his name, they just called him Squanto. They showed the pilgrims how to farm crops successfully, catch fish and wildfowl, and make friends with the local, um, the local Wampanoag tribe. I have much time to, to finish the whole video. And, um, I will definitely will upload uh, a link for the video so you can enjoy it and I won't steal it. Well, I'll read it, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, what else I would like to tell you? I really hope you all will enjoy the holidays and uh, will have a great time and I hope you will try one of those uh, places which one I just told you if you have any questions to me please don't hesitate and send me an email I will be more than happy to hear out from you um, the email is um, actually I will put it on screen for you so it will be visible and easier to and easier to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here you go. Here's the email and I will be more than happy if you will send me an idea or your review or anything, to be honest with you. Anything. I would like to know you all um, and I would I really would like to improve the show and if you would like to be a star of the show please shoot me an email and um, I will shoot, shoot an email back. So um, please like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I upload a video every week and I put a links all the time on Twitter and Facebook. So. You can go and uh, check out that check check that out. Um, I have about more than a minute, maybe a little more. So I would like to thank you all for watching me tonight, and I will see you in two weeks, and I'll have something special for you. Um, let's see the third video I prepared for you. It's from the History Channel, and I think it's pretty interesting. Goodbye. <laughs>
but we bet you didn't know Thanksgiving didn't become an annual tradition until more than 200 years later. That first Thanksgiving in 1621 wasn't just one big meal. It was a three-day festival of eating, hunting, and other entertainments in honor of the Pilgrims' first successful harvest. The Indians killed five deer as gifts for the colonists, so venison was definitely on the first Thanksgiving menu. But we bet you didn't know that turkey was not. They also didn't have pumpkin pie or potatoes, which hadn't been introduced to New England yet. And while they may have eaten cranberries, they would have been served plain, not in a sauce or relish. The Pilgrims didn't plan on starting a Thanksgiving tradition. In fact, they didn't repeat the November celebration in subsequent years. In 1789, President George Washington announced the first ever national Thanksgiving holiday, which took place on Thursday, November 26th. But it didn't become an annual tradition nationwide until the 19th century. That's when an American writer named Sarah Josepha Hale, most famous for writing the nursery rhyme Mary Had a Little Lamb, was inspired by a diary of pilgrim life to recreate that first Thanksgiving feast. Beginning in 1827,